All right, so let's take a look at this problem, remove duplicates from sorted array. When you're looking at array problems, usually you might be doing something where you would sort the array uh, increment with two pointers where one is telling where you are in the array. Maybe you keep a temporary pointer somewhere else. Uh, you could end up going from the reverse side of the array. Just keep that in mind when you're trying to think of strategies for how you approach the array problems and you'll get used to it. But for this particular problem, you're given an integer array nums sorted in a non-decreasing order. Remove the duplicates in place such that each unique element appears only once. The relative order of the elements should be kept the same. Since it is impossible to change the length of the array in some languages, you must instead have the result be placed in the first part of array nums. More formally, if there are k elements after removing the duplicates, then the first k elements of nums should hold the final result. It does not matter what you leave beyond the first k elements. Return k after replacing the final result in the first k slots of nums. Do not allocate extra space for another array. You must do this by modifying the input array in place with big O of one extra memory. The reason why they're saying this is because what you could do is you could iterate from the beginning of the array to the end of the array. You could create another array and then only when you get unique numbers, just start adding it to that second array you've created. And then you will have an array that only has unique values that are uh, sorted because the array you're given is already sorted. So when you consider that and they've already kind of indicated to you there's a better way to do it because they're forcing you to do it, this is where you have those problems where you're gonna do something where it's in memory. So in general, the important part here is that you're gonna to need to return how many elements are in the array that you want to account for and then uh, return that at the end. So scrolling down here, you have a couple of examples. If you had an array that had one, one, and two, then you want to return two because you only are going to have two elements that it should look at when it's iterating through your output array. Those would be one and two because you're removing that duplicate one right there. And if you have this array, then what you're expected to have is zero, one, two, three, four. So that's five numbers and your output is five. And you can see where they just iterated through and they removed the duplicates. So that way they only had the individual numbers that were not duplicated in the final result. So you have some constraints here. You know that nums.length is uh, greater than or equal to zero and less than or equal to this very large number. And also the uh, values that can be stored in it are either greater than or equal to a negative 100 or less than or equal to 100. The reason why this is important just because you don't necessarily need to check to see if nums is null because they're telling you that it basically won't be and that at least it will have either a size of zero or some size that's very large. All right, so now that you know all that, the approaches that you could take to this. Well, like I said, you know, typically what do you do? You might end up sorting to solve a solution there. But for this one, you don't need to sort. They've already given you a sorted array, so we can knock that out. Uh, you might use another data structure, so you might use another array. But again, they've already told you don't do that. Do this all in memory. So now the other thing is, okay, what's another popular way to solve uh, array problems, you know, and things that you could do? Well. I would then start thinking maybe I need to have another index where I am storing another index that helps me iterate through the array and know where I am in two different places, whether it's going from beginning to end and then maybe another one that's trailing behind it. So let's think about that. Okay, that does make sense because if we look at these numbers we have here, if we start going from left to right, we know that there's nothing in our output array yet. So if we had an index that keeps track of where we're outputting numbers in our final array, then when we're here at the beginning, we can start our index that tracks where we're putting numbers. We have zero and then we increment it to one. OK, well, zero is not the same. Or sorry, it is the same as the previous index. So then we'll go to one. Oh, and that is different than the previous index that we had stored. So we will go ahead and store that in this index of one. And you'll kind of see how I'm going to use that moving forward. And so I'll go ahead and write the code and then you should get a better idea of this. So if we have an int index that equals zero 
that's where we'll know that we're going to be placing those other values. And then all we got to do from here is just increment through our array. So i is less than nums dot length, and then i plus plus. Now, there is the condition where if we haven't actually set any number in our output array, well, then we should just take whatever that first value is. So if index equals zero, or now here's where we're going to check and say, was that previous value we set the same as the current value we're looking at? If it's the same, we don't want to set it. So if the value of nums at index minus one, this is why we're checking to see if index is zero first, so we don't end up with index out of bounds. So if it's one, we've already set at least one value. We're checking that previous value and we say, is it not equal to nums of our current value we're working through the array so i now after that we know that we have a new value and we'll just say nums of index equals nums of i and then after that when we keep going through and adding values into our output array you want to increase that index value by one so if you actually came through here and you only had one value in this nums, uh, it's going to end up being zero. It only go through this first condition. You're going to set nums of zero equal to nums of zero, which is not a problem. And then index will automatically get pushed to the value of one. And if that was it, and what we're gonna do here at the end, because they asked for this return value, we're just gonna return the index because at this point it's almost the same or it is the same as just counting the number of values we've assigned to our output array. And as simple as that, we'll go ahead and click Submit. You can see that it's accepted. And if we want to run through this one more time just to showcase it, so as you're iterating through, for instance, this one up here where you have these zeros and ones, the first time you have a zero here. And so it's going to hit this condition first. It's going to set it. So this way, nums of index where index is zero equals zero. And then you're going to bump the index. Now you come through again. You have this value for nums of i because i is one nums of index minus one because index became one is zero so nums of zero is that zero and it is is it not equal to nums of i which is one which is zero no then it comes back through again and you're going to end up having one versus zero and then you're bumping the index value so you can see how this works if you have any questions for that uh, let me know and then when you want to talk about big O complexity, this is going to be big O of N because you're going to iterate through every value inside of nums. So when I say big O of N, that just means there's N values in this array of nums. And then the constant space is what you're using here because you're not allocating another array. You're just using the existing array. That is why it is constant space, meaning you're just using the existing space that you have and no more. And then as you keep iterating through, you're not you know, storing an extra number somewhere else. You're literally just taking what is there and comparing two different parts of the array, updating it, and then returning this other value that you've created just to track uh, where you are in the array when you're replacing values.